Okay, topic 12 is called correlation. Um, correlation literally meaning related together. So correlation is all about how two variable quantities are related together. For example, class 8i like watching TV, but they have an important test. Here is some information about 10 people. So it's hours watching TV and exam score. So if there's 10 people and there's two pieces of information about each person. So for example, uh, there's a person who spent five hours watching TV and he got or she got an exam score of 82. So each column in that table is uh, two pieces of information, hours watching TV and exam score for a person and there's 10 people overall. So we can make a scatter diagram of this information. So the person that spent one hour got 100 in the test, this person that spent three hours watching TV got 80 in the test, 14 hours watching TV, that person only got 25 in the test, five hours watching TV that person got 82 in the test there. 9 hours watching TV that person only got 28 in the test down there. 7 hours watching TV and 50% in the test and then another person also spent 7 hours watching TV and they got 49 in the test. Somebody spent no time watching TV and got 80 in the test 2 hours and 90 and 6 hours and 60 percent and there's a clear pattern there that um, people who are spending more hours watching TV are getting lower exam scores because the graph is going down so you can draw a line of best fit through that and it just shows the general trend of the data now um, for GCSE level, this is just a question of getting the best straight line that you can through the middle. Try to get as many points above as below. Um, strictly speaking, it should go through the average point. So if you average out all the hours and average out all the exam scores, you get two numbers. And your line of best fit should go through those two numbers. Um, but it's not something they given a mark for in the past on AQA GCSE and there are actually mathematical methods for getting the absolute best line um, but you don't see them until you're about 17 or so um, in the studies you do at that age so at the level of GCSE in the first module it's just a question of get the best line you can through the middle of the points keeping as, as many points roughly above as below. And it's a, it's a straight line, it's not joining each point up. So, as we've said, as the number of hours watching TV goes up, the exam score goes down. So we say that those two variables are negatively correlated. So negative because the graph is going down. As, as one increases, the other decreases. Okay, here's another example. Eight people of various ages were asked how much money they had in the bank. So there's two pieces of information for each person, how old they are, and how much money they've got. Again, plotting these on the graph. And you get a general impression that as one goes up so does the other so those two things are positively correlated as one increases so does the other and in fact if the data fit a trend line really well so if, if they form a really close straight line without much variation you can say that there's strong correlation strong positive or negative correlation depending on which way it's going 
Okay, here's another example. It's the weights of 10 people and their intelligence scores. And this time there's no clear pattern. Um, there's no good reason to expect that heavier people or lighter people are cleverer. So you can't say that as somebody gets fatter or thinner, they get cleverer. So you say there's no correlation between weight and IQ. An exam question might just show you some graphs with crosses on and say what type of correlation is this and then you'd be expected to say positive correlation or negative correlation or strong positive or negative correlation or if it's like this no correlation okay so you can use the line of best fit to make predictions about data for example it's the people watching TV again We've got somebody who spent five and a half hours watching TV, 5.5 hours, and we have to predict their test score. So there's our graph of hours watching TV and exam scores, and the line of best fit that we drew on it. Now, if somebody spent 5.5 hours, five and a half hours, then we can read up from five and a half hours on the graph and then as soon as it hits the line start reading across to 64.8 in this case to predict their test score so we predict that they will get 64.8 in the test of course it's not a guarantee that they will get 64.8 because it's based on averaging out a lot of data and making predictions about things in general you can't make specific predictions only general ones so the person probably won't get 64.8 in the test but it's the best prediction we can make question two the person got 40 percent in the test how many hours do you think they spent watching tv so this question is asking you to do it the other way read across from 40 percent in the test until you hit the line and then down to 10 hours in this case so from the graph we predict they watch TV for 10 hours now question 3 is a bit trickier a person watched TV for 30 hours what do you think they got in the test well if we go to 30 hours on the graph 10, 20, 30 that would be somewhere down in that region there um, and if we went by the line of best fit we would be predicting that they got minus something in the test now obviously that doesn't make any sense um, not least because the minimum you would expect that they would get would be zero so you can't really make a sensible prediction uh, for that region of data and in fact if we're going to make predictions from the line of best fit we should stay within the data that we've got so I wouldn't confidently make a prediction for anything between the lowest and the highest cross on that graph so we can make predictions within that area that I'm indicating but anything that's outside you can't make a sensible prediction because you don't know whether it's going to carry on in a straight line or it might go somewhere else completely so the best way to answer that in terms of an exam is we cannot make a sensible prediction because 30, 30 hours is outside the range of our original data uh, that that key phrase outside the range of our original data is what's going to earn you the mark in the exam if there's a question like that because uh, you do get questions that say explain why you can't make a sensible prediction so remember that phrase outside the range of our original data <laughs>